What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title called Tales of Iron 2, which is the sequel to, in my opinion, one of the best RPGs of the last, like, two years ago. It was definitely one of the best indie banger RPGs of the year, whether it was 2022 or 2021, I can't really remember. But today we're going to check out the sequel. The demo is available on the Steam Next Festival, just in case you wanted to check it on out. We are joining that glorious season where games are raining down upon us and we get to get a tiny little glimpse of things that are coming right around the corner. So we're going to dive on in for about 30 minutes and try to figure out whether or not this is a game that deserves a hallowed spot on your wish list. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live, but let's go ahead and dive on in here and get it. Uh, we'll go Tales of Iron mode, that's perfectly fine. In the north, they thought they knew all there was to know of war. Until the War of the Rift. While the southern king hid, Warm in his keep, the Dark Wings cut their bloody trail from frozen north to winter's edge. Alone, the Warden and his small garrison turned their whiskers to the icy wind. At the end of hope, in a last barrage, they wiped Batkind from the land and memory. With no sign of the Darkwing's return, in time, few believed them little more than a fairy's tale. But at Mount Cauldron, time had been all they needed. An old enemy claws free of their icy tomb and hungers for vengeance. But not all is lost. King Rattus brings north a cause for hope. A bastard prince, placed in the paws of the Warden of the Wastes to raise as his own a secret of blood never to be told. Now, fate calls for a hero in a murderous screech, and one young rat will answer. All right, so let's get cracking here. The sun is apparently up. Yes, indeed. That's a thing that happens every morning. Uh, they want me to throw on my armor right there. All right. The of his father's boots on the stair was how every morning began for Arlo. The booming shout to ready himself was louder still. But such was Lord Eivor's zeal at a new day. Dawn was breaking over Winter's Edge, and Arlo was yet to miss one. All right, well, let's go ahead and throw on the duds, and we'll see if we can get outside and smack ourselves a couple of bats because they're rowdying up, dude. They're causing problems out here. They needs to get got. Looks like we got a couple of weapons to choose from, a sword or an iron axe. Mm, I don't really mind either way. We'll probably go with the sword for right now just because it feels like it's going to be a little bit lighter on the old hand. Yeah, that'll work for me right there. All right, I'll follow you on out. I don't know exactly what you're telling me contextually, but like I'll try to figure it out. Sure, I'm just gonna follow you around. For, what does this the do right here? Echoed with the horns of the returning hunters, bringing their night's bounty. Arlo's little heart quickened to hear it. The only thrill to be found inside the high walls was a hunter's tales of what lay beyond them. Mm. All right, so thumbs up. I managed to follow him on over here. It's the little tasks that really make a tutorial stick. Arlo tells himself it's a good life here in Winter's Edge. The bustling of contented rat folk, the crisp mountain air, and without the endless scourge of frogs the southerners suffer. Why should he want for more? 
I will, I will absolutely follow you on over to the right. So far, it seems our control scheme is fairly standard here. We've got WASD to move around. Now we've got left click to attack. The game recommended that I use a controller before diving on in. So I, of course, being who I am, decided to be petulant about it and decide to play through the demo using keyboard controls only because I'm a true believer that I shouldn't have to buy extra peripherals for a system that I've already got set up in order to play your game. Just because you put like a little warning on the front that says the game plays the best with a controller does not mean you're off the hook for designing actual controls for the platform itself and I'm glad to see that they've done that. I was a little worried. Tales of the hunt today. Lord Eivor was already dividing what was an excellent hall. Happy to see his people provided for. Arlo longed only to join the hunt, to see the Ratdom or even the lands beyond. His father called it a fool's wish. Arlo's destiny was unshakable, much like the keep that would become his by birthright. <laughs> So go get money and go buy something from a guy. All right, that's that's generally what I'm getting from this conversation here. This thing is flashing at me, so let's see what happens. Perhaps Arlo's favorite, as the shopkeeper had wares from far and wide. But getting him to part with his curiosities was never easy. All right, well, we went ahead and grabbed the thing. Do I have to go get more stuff? Like, are there more errands for us to do? I believe that there are. He's giving me the same spiel, so I'm guessing I gotta go to every single store and bang this thing out. Alright, alright, alright. Let me have the conversation. It's fine. I'm bad at following instructions, but we're gonna figure it out along the way. You there. Arlo has no memory of his mother, but Hilda's food was a true taste of maternal kindness. With the right ingredients, she would make meals nourishing to body and soul. That's also how I eat my meals. You just stick your face straight into the bowl, dude. Sometimes you just gotta get some mojo de ajo in you, dude. All right, what other shops are around here that I gotta visit with? It seemed like there was three or four, so I'm guessing I just gotta go down the line. Leaf was the rat Arlo most admired. As younger brother to Lord Eivor, his carefree uncle never faced the burden of being warden of the wastes. With walls this strong, his duties were light, leaving him plenty of time for his nephew. And ear gauges. All right, down a little bit further. There's got to be another shop around here, right? Yeah, like a blacksmith. This is the good stuff right here. This is where we're going to get ourselves a shiny new pig sticker. Rat's rat. With no interests beyond his forge. If you have the parts, this master crafts rat can make armor and weapons that would see off a sky scorcher bite. Or so he claims. Arlo wondered how well they do against something that wasn't a myth. All right, I guess I made a helmet. And then I've got my iron armor over here, so I'm guessing I'm, like, upgrading it? I don't really see, like, a stat change or comparison or anything else like that, but it wants me to do it, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Mm, I don't have any iron ore left, and I don't think... I have any bones left? I do have a wood. I do have wood logs, though. So technically, I could upgrade some stuff over here. Yeah, let's do that. All right. I think I did the thing that I was supposed to do. I guess I could probably talk to him and see if I could upgrade my sword or whatever. But let's just head back to Uncle or Father or whoever he is. I don't know. Rat culture is kind of complicated. Hunters had brought unwelcome news. The family of the reviled creatures Ratfolk called backstabbers had moved into the wastes. Eivor told his son to fetch his weapons. Ah, I'm ready to roll. I threw on my hunter's garb real fast that they just gave. I wasn't upgrading my gear either. I was just crafting new ones. So now I have multiple armors and things just rattling around my inventory. Ah, well. We live and we learn. UI struggles in the early game. All right, so what's up His with uh, this place? His no explanation for suddenly taking Arlo on a hunt. It even gave the hunters pause. Arlo had been taught to fight, and better than most. But rarely had he been tested. He was determined to prove himself, 
The rugged terrain of the outskirts could have taken all day to traverse, but Arlo's trusty grappling hook allowed him to swing between its many crevices. There's a lot of attributes I look for in a grappling hook, but I think trustworthiness is one of them. Like, when you give that grappling hook a task, you want to make sure that it lives up to expectation. I don't know if I can get through that wall right there, but there was like an easy secret on that side that I saw. Let's go ahead and pull ourselves up. We done grappled it. A backstabber. Okay, so it's like one of those quill beasts from Diablo. Gotcha. We're gonna take him down, dude. I'm gonna mount him on my wall. Do I grapple from like a standing position? I think it's just like set up that way. So I thought maybe I could jump and swing sort of. The sharp axe cutting through the vines. The wilds were part of his home, and nothing in them would frighten him. I was sort of wondering if it's like Ghost of Tsushima, because like in Ghost of Tsushima, it's the opposite. You can only grapple when you're like midair or whatever, and so I wasn't exactly sure how it'd the play out. The frostberry bushes of the wastes were in full fruit already. Their juice made a healthy tonic, though Lord Eivor preferred them fermented. His father was a sturdy rat, built for strength, not speed. So Arlo found it curious that he challenge him to a race. The prospect of the hunt had filled Lord Eivor with a vigor that his son had not seen in years. Or at least since breakfast. He's not gonna make it, is it, dude? I'm getting the vibes that he's gonna get took out some here somewhere. We're gonna be like, no! Oh, that thing's way bigger than I thought it would be. A warden fights the hardest battles, he told Arlo, and needs the sharpest blade. With that, Eivor gifted Arlo his own sharpening whetstone. All right, let's go do the sharpening whetstone thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll figure it out. All right, so I've got a quick select set up over there. It looks like I pressed four to sharpen this bad boy up. There we go. Let's get her nice and shiny. For their spines, or for some past unforgivable deed, no rat knew. Either way, Arlo is about to find himself at the pointy ends of this brood. Even young backstabber red attacks were brutal, but a well-timed dodge would see Arlo escape unscathed. Well-timed dodge? Yay, I well-timed dodged it. Oh, he's getting battle damage, dude. He's getting like little cuts and scrapes all over him. That's pretty sick. Is he dead yet? I feel like I've been stabbing him for a long time. He's got a lot of lacerating wounds right now that have me feeling pretty positive about victory. Oh, I don't think he's down yet. Hold on, we gotta wait for it. Can I block? How do I block? I got questions about blockinating. There we go. I got a sharp. I guess they've put like monster hunter mechanics into the game where you've got like a sharpness meter. And once the sharpness meter goes down, you actually can't inflict damage anymore. So you're going to have to find openings here to keep your weapon nice and sharp. Oh, with the fatality, go to sleep. Can I have his parts? This backstabber lived up to its name with its deadly white attack. But Arlo's shield could block the deadly spikes. All right, what are we? What are we trying to do? Oh my God! Okay, yep, it just fired a bunch of bullets at me. This one's got the projectiles. All right, we'll put that down. Nice sense of impact, though, right there on the block. Another one bites the dust. This young one used vicious yellow attacks. Arlo had to time his parries perfectly. Okay, okay. What key is parry? You wanna, you wanna give me like a, a parry key real fast? Just left shift. Oh, okay. So I got to do it with the... Ow. Okay. I got glomped, bro. That hurt. Okay. Nothing going on there. There it is. Okay. So I just got to find the parry window from here. You want to go again? Let's do this thing. I'm going to drink a little bit of my goo juice real fast. Whatever my, like, radish go-go juice is, I'm going to knock it out. His mother had left her young to fight alone, but the same could not be said of Lord Eivor as he leapt to his son's side. 
Can I hurt it? Ow. Okay. It can hurt me. Ow. Yep. Didn't see that one coming. All right. Let's get the red attack out of the way. I'm going to drink some go-go juice real fast. I also need to sharpen my weapon. Like, is my dad going to help me out with this situation? Because he needs to help me out with this situation. This is kind of like a... Yeah, there you go. Cut his face open, dude. Give him the old face cuts. Oh, dude, I pressed shift. I pressed shift. I tried. Dude, this thing's kind of badass. Oh, I couldn't see the colors because everything faded when my health was low, dude. I couldn't see the color of the prompt. All right, well, let's give this guy another run and see how it goes. Yeah, let's dodge out of the way of that. Maybe put a couple of those on him. We got the big blockses right there. We got the dodge right there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to close that gap, though. All right, we'll get through right there. Couple little hits off right there. Big parry right there. Oh, no, my weapon, dude. Sharpen it, sharpen it. Okay, white attack, red attack. I'm trying to... I, I would like the prompts to be a little bit larger on the enemy, I think. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, back up off the spikes. There's a white. Okay. We got a yellow go. Oh, I mistimed it. Red's coming through. Oh, that one counted, huh? Okay, I thought I was behind him already. White attack right there. Red attack right there. Big parry. I'm going to have to sharpen my weapon pretty shortly, though. Ain't no way around it. Dodge out of that. Let me get some go-go juice going real fast. Just a little bit of the old go-go juice. Light it up. We got white attack. We got yellow coming up if the pattern is right. There we go. This should be it. All right. I think I got to press X right there to finish him off. Evor's mighty blade that took her head. But the fight was won together. The hunter's sword. Hey, it gives me more damage and it gives me some electric damage. You can definitely feel like the monster hunter influence creeping on in now with like the elemental weapons and the sharpness meter and the things of that nature. Did it automatically equip my new quill blade? Nice, dude. Can I, like, harvest this, dude? Let's get some pieces out of him. I'm trying to have some, like, porcupine jerky, dude. The thick hide of a backstabber brings toughness to your armor and weapons. We've also got some quills on inside of there, so that's good. Whole bunch of goodies that we get to take home, and I'm guessing this was some kind of proving ground for how awesome we are in rat society. Arlo basked in his father's pride. Almost as warm as at the fire inside Winter's Edge. Do we, like, not wear shoes? It's kind of snowy outside, man. We must have, like, tough little who. I guess we've got, like, some leg wraps or something going on. For a big guy, he's kind of... Oh, he brought the head back on his belt, too. That's kind of a cool little detail. Can I break through this now that I have a stronger weapon? Or do I need bombs or something to get through this? Well, I tried heavy attacks, I tried sharpening my weapons, I tried light attacks, and I can't seem to get through it. So I'm guessing there's some utility that we just don't have for right now that's going to allow us to get through there. Triumphant and keen to tell the tale of his son's victories, Lord Eivor set to a night of drinking with the elders. Okay, but what about that big sandwich right there? I see like a $5 footlong sitting inside that oven. That hoagie roll is looking pretty good, or is that kind of like a radish torta, dude? I could get down on a torta right now. That sounds amazing. Oh, they've already got the jam session going on. Let us drink, brethren. I guess I'll just go to bed then. I don't know. Arlo was reluctant to return to his bed, wondering how long he must wait to hunt again. The booming footsteps that woke him this time were nothing like those of his father. Uh, there's, like, blue fire on the ground. Oh, God. Okay, is that, like, a bat dragon? Not to be concerned with swapping out T's for D's, but, like, I'm a little bit concerned right now. Okay, yeah, he did. He a big old pile of ashes. Can I have that cape, though? The Winter's Edge Key. It opens the Great Keep of Winter's Edge. All right, I'm going to fall back for a minute, though. Ow, I'm also going to get smacked in the face because that's what I do. 
Yeah, give me a little bit of that electric damage, dude. We're going to light him up a little bit. Got the yellow right there, but I didn't get the parry. Oh, I got the parry on that one, though. There we go. That sharpness meter does not hold up, man. I'm going to have to sharpen my weapon frequently. Hopefully, I can already tell when I play this game, I'm going to focus pretty heavily on, like, weapons that have a lot of sharpness to them. All right, a dark wing snout. Uh, what's back to the left? The door is over here. Is the Where's Dad at? Like, is he... All good, or, th I mean, I'm going to guess that he's not all good because everything's on fire and everything's turning sort of that Lich King blue. Uh, can I save right here? What is this? It does not give me my health back. I was wondering if it was like a save point or whatever. Okay. Don't go into the fire is a thing that I learned right there. The Warden stood alone, holding back a whole Darkwing army. Their cruel Count Kazak leading them. <gasps> His father charged. But the Darkwing Count was as fast as he was strong. The Winter's Crown tumbled to Arlo's feet. Now, without a head to rest on. There was no time to grieve his father, as from above the Count revealed his greatest weapon, a Sky Scorcher. Not a fairy's tale, but an undead beast whose very breath could level kingdoms, and its eye was trained on Arlo. All that came next was a fog of bloodlust, snapping jaws, and the beating of leathery wings. I'm trying. Like, I need him to come down from, like, his little perch. Okay, almost hit me with the giant bomb. Oh, that hurts so much to my face holes. But there could be no victory. Arlo awoke, groggy and warm to his father's shouts. Only he wasn't in bed. The warmth was from the fire that had engulfed Winter's Edge, and the shouts were his uncle's. The only other survivor of the Darkwing attack, Leaf was bruised and his hind paws barely steady. He'd seen villagers flee to the outskirts. Arlo knew it was up to him to make them safe. Oh no, dude, it reduced my health down too. I basically got level up Reese. Look how little my health meter is now, dude. It's so little compared to how big it was. All right, let's go kill some bat folk. They got it coming. They they, they lit my dad on fire and cut his head off. Some response. You got to you gotta answer some things. You can't let that slide. That's just the way that life goes. I don't make the rules. If somebody lights your dad on fire and then cuts off his head, that sounds like blood feud territory to me. Aw, oh, dude, he made like a little adorable sound before he died. He'd know these anywhere. Crunk's smithy hammer and Hilda's chef's knife. Arlo wondered why they would leave them here. I'm, I'm gonna guess they didn't leave them willingly. That would be my estimate. I'm not trying to be all crazy about it or anything, but... Oh, he still attacks? I thought I canceled it because the little icon went away. Alright, let me get some health back real fast. What do you want to do? What's the, uh, what's the, what's the next course of action? You getting perfect parried and then slaughtered? I mean, that sounds like the course of action to me. Yeah, go to sleep right now. You lay down on the ground and I'm going to sharpen my weapon on top of your booty cheeks as a sign of victory. Alright, so we've got a basic rat helm right there. It doesn't look like it offers great visibility, though. Uh, it, it feels like maybe I'm losing access to some of my peripherals out here. Let's go back. Can I go into any of the buildings in the background? Doesn't look like it. Uh, we've got a hunter's pauldron. It's better than what we got on right now. I'll go ahead and take it. I'm willing to bet I probably still can't get through that little area right there, so I'll worry about it later. Climb our way back on up. Oh no, dude, there's an archer. You and I are about to have beef, bro. Big time beef. 
There it is. Nice little fatality to put him to sleep. I need some more of those red berries, though. Basic bat armor? I'll definitely take that, too. I kind of look like I'm wearing a catcher's outfit from baseball. I've definitely got, like, that, that vibe. With the attack at Winter's Edge, no hunters had come to check their traps. Arlo thought he might find a use for them. Okay, so we've got ourselves like a landmine that we can play around with. Let me sharpen my sword real quick first so that we're getting some kind of bare minimum utility out of it. Part of me is curious if I can use the landmine to blow open that door back on over there, but I guess we'll keep some forward momentum since this is sort of like a first impressions video. Oh, berry bushes. I need these. Fill up my flask. Perfect. Uh, that thing looks angry, dude. Are they jamming out on, like, an electric guitar back there? Arlo had found the reason his friends had fled. The taunting shrieks revealed that this was Baron Frostovic, son of the Darkwing who took his father, and therefore a perfect target for his revenge. I mean, revenge sounds good to me. I'll take some revenge. What's he doing in the background? I'm going to try to light up these little bats first. I'm guessing that these are kind of like the... Uh... I wish I knew how much health they had, dude. It's kind of hard to tell from the visual display. I'm getting corner trapped right now. They're kind of like overlaying their attacks too, which is kind of a headache. All right, get out from underneath that. Yeah, I wish they had health bars. Health bars would make this more simple. It looks like I can sharpen on the walk, though. Ugh. I'm getting tossed. This is not going well. They've got their attacks, like, overlapped right now, and I can't get them separated. So they're kind of, like, machine gunning me with these. Oh, he got me with the backswing right there. Got me with the background attack. All right, well, let's try to run this back real quick. Get a free poke right there. And we'll see how it goes this time. So we're going to be blocking ice balls with our face. There we go. The balls have been blocked. Big spear stab with a parry right there. Put it into him. There we go. We've got him covered. He's down to the little hash line. So he's going to call in his little dudes. I feel like it's going to be a good idea to just bum rush right here. Like pick one of them and go all in. Because the game doesn't have stamina. So I can pretty much just like machine gun DPS one down. Then we can play cleanup on the other little bat guy. But honestly, I wasn't. I came into this. I don't remember the first game being that difficult. I've been struggling with this, though. Like the parry windows, I just can't seem to find them. Like the dodge iframes, I just can't seem to find them. And it's a strange thing because usually I'm pretty good at games like this. Now he put the landmine down, and then he's going to dive, get blown up by the landmine, and hopefully I can hit him hard. Oh, I wasn't able to hit him hard enough. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to deal... There we go. Back up in the air with you. I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with another one of his fight phases. Let's focus on the archer because I have a lot of trouble seeing the archer's actual attacks. I gotta get... Oh, man. All right. But as I was saying, I've been impressed with the difficulty of the game thus far. I don't know why, but I just can't seem to find these perfect parry windows. They're getting me into trouble. I'm not, I was not, I'm not so sure how well the sharpening mechanic fits into this kind of gameplay. I'm willing to be convinced, but it sort of feels like... Weapons should probably have a lot more sharpness than they... Oh, my God. Yeah, heal up. Hopefully, gives me a second. Big guy, what are you doing? Well, I mean, we got the parry. And down he goes, dude. Oh, my God. That was tougher than I thought it was going to be. But anyways, I'm not sure how the sharpening mechanic fits in, but my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. Today, we were taking a look at Tales of Iron 2. Tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at something else. Appreciate y'all being here, and I thought the demo was pretty fun and cool. We'll see what they do with it around release time.